Excellent. There's one last question I wanted to do in this area. It's actually not covered in the book, but but we come across it a lot in, in the area of enzymes, you know, when they're plant, um, animal-based or even synthetic enzymes. What what are the dangers of, of, of those kinds of synthetic uh, type of supplements? Well, it's hard to put the word enzyme and synthetic uh, together. Uh, enzymes in its neutered, uh, scientifically described form are not really what they are. I mean, if you go to and get an education about enzymes, they're going to tell you they're proteins. Now, that is only part of the story. And the way I like to describe it so the listeners may understand it is if I walked into a room and you were standing there and I looked at you and said, all you are is a skin on the outside of your body. A thinking person would be offended by that. You'd say, wait a minute. I have bones, I have organs, I have circulatory system, my blood, blah, 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 blah. And would you be right? Yes. Uh, even a, a, a greater thought on that, you'd say I have an emotional state, a spiritual state, and all of that is absolutely authentically true. Now, you are not the outer skin on your body alone, but the outer skin on your body is obviously a very important factor or you wouldn't be there. And so when we call in science an enzyme of protein, it is true that it's a skin, but what is the rule and what is the function of a, an enzyme? It is a way that your bioelectric body, your electrical body, receives bioelectricity. And it comes in enzymes. The vehicle is the protein, but the purpose and objective of the enzyme is to increase biofrequency in the body. It is literally an, e an egg and a sperm's birthing of a human being, an enzyme. So it's an enzyme activity that bring a, a sperm and an egg together and create a human being. Ironically, it's an enzyme that decomposes our body after we take our last breath back to the earth again. So enzymes are very powerful catalysts. And that we know it in science. It's a catalyst, but somehow we didn't put two and two together. Because all of modern, quote, science is based upon matter-based thinking, M-A-T-T-E-R-based thinking, that everything is elemental. And it's like bean counting, one bean, two bean, three beans, rather than biofrequent or active. And the difference is looking at things in a surface way, as we just described the human cell, versus a deeper way, uh, you may want to call that a quantum way. So quantum biology sees the body as active little pieces of electric flowing around in circles that manifest matter, not that matter is all the story. You know, so with that said, now we come back to an enzyme. Uh, if you take from an animal tissue and extract enzymes from it, that takes a process of heating that enzyme to several hundred degrees. You kill an enzyme when you do that. So anyone that is taking, for instance, an enzyme, these are commonly used in Germany as an example, and saying to me, uh, I'm getting tremendous benefit from a cooked uh, glandular enzyme from an animal. Well, you're in fantasy land. Because the truth of the matter is, just like if I put your body in an oven, you wouldn't be very active after that either. Well, an enzyme is just like you. <laughs> just like you. Bottom line is, you're going to be dead as a doorknob, and that enzyme is going to be dead as a doorknob. Now, there are active enzymes, and this was the brilliant work of Dr. Howell. And Dr. Hal knew enzymes were more than protein, knew they were the catalyst of life, and knew they basically could, could revolutionize our understanding of health and how to improve health and how to prevent premature aging, etc. And way back in the 20s and 30s, Dr. Hal was doing this magnificent work. And what you have to know about him is he was the first guy who was able to stabilize a culture to grow enzymes on out of vegetable-based matter. And he did it successfully, formulated that, and I was a very fortunate guy because 40 years ago we were able to buy pounds of this for pennies because nobody knew what, what Dr. Howe was doing. So I remember taking handfuls of enzymes and putting them on my mouth and it was $5 a pound or something. Finally, some legitimate science caught up to the importance of enzymes and even in mainstream medicine in some countries, they use these enzymes. 
and realize that these are very, very, very pow powerful agents on reversing disease, preventing disease, and preventing premature aging. I, as an example, take 20 digestive enzymes a day for anti-aging purposes because as I increase the biofrequency, the bioelectric frequency in and around my cells, it places a shield around them so that when a free radical comes to kill my healthy cells and age me prematurely, the shield prevents that from happening. Uh, we use systemic enzymes here on a number of disorders. And if you went to a country like uh, Germany or Sweden, my wife's country, you'd see them in mainstream hospitals using high protease, protein digesting enzymes in the process of helping to reverse cancer or viruses or bacteria. And with that said, uh, we make the strongest one available in North America that you can ingest. And we've seen great, great results with that because all of the bad guys have protein skins too. And so high protease, protein digesting enzymes can effectively go after the bad guys very, very well. So you want plant-based. You want high ratios in formulation that support one another. You don't want too much of one or too much of another. You want a symbiotic effect. With a systemic enzyme, it's a symbiotic effect between different protein digesting enzymes. In the form of digestive enzymes, you have enzymes that digest fats and carbohydrates and proteins. And so that's a combination enzyme in that one. Uh, we produce very strong, the strongest available in North America, the, the LifeGive products. But there are other good ones there. And in all candor to you, there's only two major companies in the world that produce enzymes. And those of us who do this work, we formulate them and, and tell those companies to make them. And so I don't know of a bad digestive enzyme uh, or systemic enzyme that's made of a plant-based uh, uh, methodology, uh, whereas I don't know a good one that's made of an animal-based. 